Hi there, I'm Dr. Capella, and I'm here to welcome you to View from the Top, a project of Builders with God Ministry. Join us as we go on an insightful journey, gaining perspectives from God's Word. I want to implore you to grab a pen and a notebook, jot down a lesson or two, and write down the things that minister to you as you watch this episode of View from the Top. And if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, now is the time to do so. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. The journey is just about to begin. Hello viewers, it's good to have you join us again on the BWGM um, view from the top today. And it's a pleasure to have here with us today, our pastor, Pastor Noel Abdullahi. And um, he's here to bring the word to us still on the theme for the year, gaining strength for the long stretch. And today he would be sharing with us on the topic strength in the waiting, strength in the waiting. So pastor, it's good to have you. You're welcome. And we're eager to hear what the Lord has to say to us today. It's a pleasure. Oh, all right, Priscilla. Thank you again for the introduction and um, viewers um, so delighted that you've joined in again for your very exciting program view from the top and today as Priscilla has said we will be discussing on um, a sub team on our main theme our main team is gaining strength for the long stretch but this sub team is strength in the waiting and um you know when you talk of strength when you talk of long stretch you know a lot of things come to mind i i see things like grit i see things like endurance i think i see things like determination mm -hmm. you know and um there was while i was you know thinking of you know how to come across um with this message in very practical ways that um people could connect with, uh, what actually came to my mind was to just look at the um, symbol of grit, of confidence and determination, which is um, the military, one of the military arms in the United States um, Army, which is known as the Marines. Um, they go through uh, some of the most rigorous training, uh, and that is because they actually go to carry out very dangerous missions. And sometimes the way I look at every year, I see every year as a mission. It's just that as the years are unfolding, the missions are looking more and more dangerous. <laughs> and so so, so, so more is, is, is required from us. And um, what I did was to just um, get testimonials from a couple of those Marines on the internet, um, if there are lessons that we can learn from, from, from them that we can plug into this team and that will now lead us into our main discourse for today, which is um, um, strength in the waiting. So um, the question was thrown as to how, how do people who are very skinny, um, very small like me, make it through the marines you know because uh, usually when they go for the recruitment you see people who are very muscular you see people who are very small and thin and you know and many times a lot of the guys who are very muscular look very strong six feet three they drop out during the training however some small guys like me should one of the persons that will look at their testimonial just about my height and has my body frame but he went through that rigorous training and how how were they able to you know go through that training um how did they make it through uh, mm -hmm. by the time we go through these testimonials we'll be able to learn a few lessons that we can now use and draw all the um, lights and insights uh, that the lord would have us look at today from scriptures you know there are two professions that paul you know likened the christian to he either likened them to athletes or he likened them to, to soldiers. So, uh, I mean, I'm just following the same analogy. And so, um, Priscilla, I'd sent you some of those testimonials. 
uh, we want to just I wanted to just read uh, a couple of them and then um, at least the same amount of two or three witnesses let every matter be established mm -hmm. so that by the time we look at them we'll be able to draw lessons on how to um, navigate um, you know um, rigor rigor um, and and um, I will say dangerous missions <laughs> so over to you Priscilla all right, so I'll be reading um, first the testimonial from former Sergeant Marge, M1, uh, 10 years as a Marine. So this is testimony from being a 10 year Marine officer and uh, Marine Sergeant, sorry. And um, he said, yes, me. I went to Paris Island as a skinny young man standing 5'7". <laughs> it's like five, uh, five point seven inches tall, and weighing that's my height. <laughs> Small like me. Yes. And weighing about one hundred and thirty-five pounds, and um, he struggled, uh, in his first three weeks. You know, with his core strength, but he wasn't about to give up. So, reading from his words now, so I endeavored to preserve it, to persevere. I en endeavored to persevere through the training. And when I graduated, I had put on 25 pounds of muscles, was as strong as a bull, and an attitude that said, go ahead if you think you can. You know, be ready before you go. Work on your core strength and your mindset that you're not a quitter. It's easy to quit. Not everyone make, makes it, but those that endeavor to persevere do. Which one are you? The one who perseveres or the quitter? That's the um, testimonial from former Sergeant March M1. Okay. So he's actually he's a former former Sergeant Major. Okay. Sergeant Major is, is okay. his rank. But I didn't want to put the name, so that's why I put M1. So okay. you know he was a Sergeant Major, and okay. um, you can see it here that um, it's not the muzzle, it's the mind. <laughs> so 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 um, um, that's why you see people who are very very muscular dropping out and then you see skinny guys you know just just make it it's not the muzzle it's the mind and um, it's very important that when you know um, as, as 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 we dwell on this team we must know that the key thing here is the mind that's why the bible says in in, in romans chapter 12 i think verse 1 and 2 it says um be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And um, I tell you that we cannot um, do this with our natural minds. We need to have the mind of Christ. And like I've always told people, I said, look, it's easier to cast out a demon than to cast down imaginations. I want you to just think about that. It's easier to cast out a demon than to cast down imaginations. Because a demon is a spirit. And once we use the word of God and we command it to come out in the name of Jesus, it comes out. But when you talk of the imaginations, the imagination is you. The imagination is dealing with your own demon. <laughs> and that's where many people are stuck. And until your mind is renewed, and I'm not against other things, people do prayer very good um, and all the other spiritual exercises, you know, God commands us to do, but it has to be done with the right mindset. Now, if you don't have the right mind and you go on in 40 days, if your mind is not renewed, you cannot get the, the right results. You know, so uh, the key thing here is not so much of activity, you know, um, it, it's more of, you know, having the right mind for, for what is ahead. So once our minds have, have are renewed, then and we have made up our mind that we, we are on a mission and we are not quitting. Um, there is no force on hell in hell that can stop us. So for that mind, we need to make up our mind that whatever it is that, you know, uh, the year unfolds. I am going through it. And that's why Paul says, I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens us. So never be intimidated by how the year, year looks. Um, they, 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 they talked about 2023 as, as if it was unsurmountable. But here you are today. You've gone through 2023. You are alive. We've, some people have even gotten 
the greatest victories in their lives in the same year that looked like the most, um, I would say, perilous looking year. So yeah. it's very important that, you know, we, we first of all talk to ourselves, renew our minds and be ready, you know, to go through whatever it is and win for Jesus. So yeah. mindset is, is key from this testimonial. And then you see that at the end, you also notice that he had put on some weight. Yeah, and then he had got muscle. He didn't oh, come with muscle, but he had got a muscle, mm-hmm. and then um, he was as strong as a bull. That's interesting. We'll see how all this pans out. Uh, we'll also look at another testimony, and then we'll be able to connect all this together with scriptures, and we'll have a very clear picture and a very, mm-hmm. you know, clear roadmap on how to navigate 2024 full of strength and finishing the year strong. Amen. 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 Okay. So I'll read the second testimonial from the Marine 2, I would say, mm-hmm. who graduated in 2017 and is it, still in Marine anyway when he gave this testimony. So he said, when I arrived at Fort Jackson, I had a visible rib cage. <laughs> that is, it was that skinny. And 10 weeks mm-hmm. later, that was not the case. Within a day of arriving at basic training, one of one of my drill sergeants took a special interest in my diet. I was ordered not to eat rabbit food. I was commanded to eat rice and potatoes. The civilians at the dining facility, uh, the, yeah, the civilians at the dining facility gave me three or four times the portion sizes I was supposed to receive. And at the end of the day, I gained 21 pounds in 10 weeks. When I arrived home on leave, I found that I filled out my shirt more than I used to, and I was unable to fit in my pants at all because my legs were too thick from all the rock matches. So- wow. Wow. You can see again the, the diet, and you can see how they gained weight that by the time they went home, even their former clothes did mm. not um, size them, you know. So um, I, that's the second testimonial. But you can see that some things are consistent here. So uh, Priscilla, what, do you th- what would you say are those things that are consistent? Um, something about diet and yes. something about them gaining weight at the end of the At the end um, of the day. Of the mission of yes, the day. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, a man of strength. You see some people say, they say, that man, a heavy man. a man of strength can't be light you can't afford to be light you understand so it was it's it's important for the kind of missions the marines go for even if you come in skinny they will have to pump you up you need to have some weight and and so it's very important that if you are going on any long journey if you know and i always tell people i said uh, life is a marathon it's a long journey it's always important that you have enough weight You, you can't you can't afford to be light so yeah. strength and weight you need to have weight in the spirit they go together so um those are some of the things we are going to be looking at you know so that we can have we can have a very um clear framework on how to res- have build strength sustain strength and then move in strength um, as we go on but at least these are two things that have been consistent from the two marine testimonials uh, that we have looked at so Um, These testimonials are just um, trying to lead us into what I will call the key issue here. All right. So uh, the key issue here is that if you have to um, gain strength, right, the thing is gaining strength for the long stretch. So it's not a short stretch. So the key issue here is that you cannot afford to be weak. You can't afford to be weak, right? Now, it is when you lose strength that you become weak. As long as you are not losing strength, you know, you will remain strong. And so one of the things we want to look at today is to identify those things that make people lose strength so that we can also share how to block them so that the strength you have, you know, it's, it's with you and it's not it's not lost it's just like you know uh, you you know when you charge your phone 
you want it to last long. And so if you know you are going on a journey, what do you do? There, is, there are different strategies that people use to conserve energy so that their, so their phones can last them. There's how you use your phone. <laughs> exactly. You go with power bank. Um, you reduce the number of apps you use so that you just leave only basic, maybe basic apps that, you know, just some people will even switch off all apps and just use, a, just put it on phone call mode. And a phone that would have drained out in, in maybe uh, one day can end up lasting four days because one has been able to learn how to conserve their energy. So if we want to gain, gain, gain strength for, for this long stretch, it's important that we understand how to um, manage ourselves in such a way that energy is conserved. And hopefully, mm -hmm. as we go on in our discussion today, I'm sure that more light will come on how we can um, achieve this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are not just looking at how we can gain strength in 2024, but we are looking at how we can gain strength in 2024 and even beyond. Mm. So it's beyond 2024, but it's just, a, you know, the beginning of the year is just a good time. Sometimes when people are looking for direction that we just represent these things, but mm. whatever it is we are sharing here are things that work for all time. Mm. All right. So um, back again to what we learned from the Marines. Um, you know, when they are enlisted and they are being recruited, they actually come as they are. Mm. They are skinny bones, you know, and with their lightweight, but you will discover that they had to go through training. So anybody who wants to go for the long stretch must be ready for training. Mm. There was a, a, a message Pastor Dele preached, uh, which was actually a theme for for one of the ministers' conference we had when he talked about kingdom workforce, kingdom workforce, and he talked about enlistment, uh, training, and deployment, you know, mm -hmm. and that if, if, if the workforce doesn't go through this process of enlistment and training, they are not mm -hmm. qualified to be deployed. And that's why you can't just rise up and say you want to be a soldier, a marine, without undergoing their training. Mm. So we don't want to underrate um, the importance of training, mm. you know. And most of the training that the marines go through um, is usually uh, categorized under what we call drills. They go through a lot of drills, you know. And then, of course, their food to changes. And by the time they go through those drills, and they eat those foods, those kind of food that will make them develop muscle, then they are ready. They are ready to go and now um, carry out the mission that the nation will be um, putting the demand on them to deliver on. So mm -hmm. by the time they are done with the training, they become weapon. They become a weapon. Each marine becomes a weapon of mass destruction. Mm. The truth of the matter is that um, every year, every year is like has a lot of battles. That's the truth. And those who um, survive or who are victorious are those who are able to win as many battles that come their way. So in 2023, we everybody had different battles. And in 2024, battles will come. We are soldiers. We are not afraid of battles. In short, we love battles because it's in the battle that um, what we are made of comes out. And mm. it's in the battle that we get victory. And it's in those battle that, battles that we get the bounties. You know, mm. if there are no battles, there will be no bounties. So mm. in those days, when kings go to battles because they want to conquer mm. the enemy's territory and then they want to bring in the booties of war mm. so um, um it's 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 let's it's it's very interesting that um battles we always bring the booties of war so let's the battle is 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 is, um, is a constant thing in life and especially for the christian too so um so that is the goal and then we we'll look 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 at the scripture we're going to read the scripture that um, this team was gotten out of. So if we go to First Kings 19, where this yeah. team was, 
was was gotten from uh, i just want to read it says and the angel of the lord came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee mm. so when elijah had to go on this long journey the first thing god had to give him was to give him the proper diet mm. and the truth is as this year is unfolding i know many um, organizations are doing a lot of programs teaching the world praying fasting and all that very very good initiatives but you see you need to have the right diet mm -hmm. because if it is if you don't if you don't change your diet to uh, conform with the battle you are going for mm -hmm. at the end of the day you are going to lose strength you, you will be overwhelmed mm -hmm. so there is a diet that mm -hmm. elijah needed for this long stretch mm -hmm. and it was not a man that prepared the diet mm -hmm. did you notice that yeah who prepared the diet priscilla the angel gave that to him and so god himself oh. brought the 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 food and and so for each of us as individuals there are some things that are personal my battles will not be the same battles you are going to face priscilla this year in 2024 and so there has to be a personal dealing between me and God, mm -hmm. you and God, so mm -hmm. that we receive the diet mm -hmm. that will prepare us for the battle of our lives. Amen. And like I said, churches can give general, but you see, there is a particular individual diet from that general. Mm. That you need to take that mm. would help you to journey you know the, the journey that is ahead and mm. to finish strong mm. and the good thing was that elijah arose he arose and he did eat and drink there are some people that the diet is available but they are not they are not ready to eat mm. Because that's how all these things happen. Mm. God will give the God. Imagine God brought this to Elijah and say, "Arise and eat." You know, there's been a situation in Scripture where God told somebody, "Eat, kill and eat," and the person mm. refused. Did God <laughs> force? <you? laughs> God will not force you. So that's mm. where our sensitivity comes in to know, hey, this is God calling my attention to this thing. Mm. Do you know that there was a particular year that? The attention I had was, look, this year, like, focus on learning more about healing. Mm. Sometimes, some people this year focus on learning more about finances. Mm. Those are nudges of the spirit, and they are different things for different folks. It's not a blanket thing. You know, we like a lot of blanket things, but God's mm. dealings with us is personal. He was dealing with mm. Elijah here. It was personal, mm. you know, and that's why, you know, um, programs that are directed to actually make people to engage God on their own are really, really recommended at this time. Mm. Because when Satan is coming, he comes to you as an individual. Mm. <laughs> so mm. the, good, the lesson we can learn from Elijah here was that he was obedient. He arose and he ate mm. and he did drink. And of course, as long as he has eaten and drank mm. the meal prepared by god for the journey there's no way his strength will fail mm. so this is something that is very crucial we could see here the role of diet mm. in giving strength and muzzle to the soldier so i mean this is consistent with the word of god mm. you know and it's it's very very important that people pay attention to the diet they are, they, are, mm. they, are, they, are, they are eating because it will determine how far they can go. You can't be eating baby food <laughs> and be, as an adult and be mm. going for a long stretch. You are mm. definitely going to pack out, pack up. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah, you pass out. There is no way you can go the long haul. So mm. uh, the other thing I wanted us 
to dwell on, you know, was that just like Elijah, there are opportunities for people to eat and they are not ready to eat. Mm. And let's not just think people are just being disobedient. Uh, mm. They don't just want to do it. Mm. You know, um, have you heard of someone saying, I don't have appetite to eat? Yeah, several times, especially when you're sick. Good. And imagine if the angel brought this food to Elijah and he didn't have appetite. What do you think will happen? Oh, my God. It wouldn't have been able to go the long stretch. It wouldn't yes. have been able Why? to Because he can't even eat. Eat at the meal to sustain him and okay. preserve his strength. Okay. Have you seen a dead person that is hungry before? Never. Never. Okay. Uh, so a dead person cannot be hungry. Mm. And then a sick person, mm. somebody who is sick, mm. won't have appetite to eat, right? No, sir. It's impossible. Okay. okay. So imagine if somebody is dead spiritually. Mm. Don't I want to now make it spiritual? Mm. Or does not have the appetite for the spiritual food. Mm. Maybe the person is spiritually sick. Mm. Now, these two categories of people, there is no way they are going to be able to go through the stretch. Yeah. Because first of all, what they need to eat, they can't even eat it. Yeah. Either they are spiritually dead yeah. or maybe they are spiritually sick. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. um, there's yeah. something I, I wrote. I said a lot of times... Um, we are not hungry because we have filled ourselves with the wrong stuff. Well, mm. That's very correct. Sir. We're not hungry for the things of God. We're not hungry to... There's no enthusiasm about mm. studying the world, about prayer, about fasting. You know, when all these programs are going on, you are not... It's, it's like, mm, no, that, what, now, now this one mango chop. Mm. That's a sign mm. that that person, something is wrong spiritually. Mm. Okay, um, because you have to eat. Mm. It is what you eat that you will fly with. So it is mm. just too important and we cannot push it aside. Mm. So this is the starting point because from we could see this from the story of Elijah. Mm. The food was provided by God and he mm. ate and he was able to go through the long stretch. So in mm. the same way, God is providing mm. meal for his children so that they mm. can eat so that they can go the long stretch. Now, as many of them that will eat, they will go the long stretch. There is no magic about it. And as many that will not eat, or will not eat enough because they don't have appetite, mm -hmm. they will definitely be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Why many people cannot eat is because they are filled with other things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the first thing we need to deal with is to empty ourselves of all those stuff. Making us, yes, that is taking room for us to eat the bread from heaven that we will eat and we will live. Jesus told them, he said, your fathers ate manna, they are dead. Mm -hmm. But I'm coming, I'm giving you the bread from heaven, you will eat and you will mm -hmm. never hunger again. Mm -hmm. I will give you the water. He said, when you drink of this water, this water of life, say you will never taste again. Mm -hmm. So, but if you are filled with something else, you don't, you don't even have the appetite, there's no room. So we need to declutter our lives from all the stuff that makes us insensitive, have no enthusiasm, have no zeal, have no hunger for the things of God. So please just read uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, uh, the NOG okay. version. Okay, so Matthew 5, verse 6 in NOG version says, a dead person is not hungry. A sick person loses their appetite. A lot of times we are not hungry because we have filled ourselves with the wrong stuff. Mm. Cool. Very clear. Blessed are those who hunger and taste for God's approval. Mm. See, they will be satisfied. Mm. Like Elijah. Mm. <laughs> what got Elijah to this point was his zeal for God's approval. Mm. And after destroying all the the prophets, you know, burnout came. And God, he was, he was, he was empty. He had downloaded everything and God had to give him 
right so uh, it's it's very important that if you don't have appetite you need to first create that appetite and that appetite can be created it can be created you know somebody was asking me oh i don't like reading the bible i don't like praying i don't like I said i said you can't you can't like it until you start it mm, mm. so the way to 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 want to read more scriptures is start reading the more you read the more you want to read mm. and then the way to to pray to pray more is to pray the mm. more you pray the more you want to pray yeah so the first thing is really to to start it mm. you know and then if you go to john 4 Look at verse 32 and 34. He says, yes. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Had any man brought him ought to eat? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Mm -hmm. Can we just reflect on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. You can have this kind of mindset and not have strength. Mm. There are a lot of things that are taking away our strength. All those stuff that we focus on that mm. is not the will of God. Mm. They drain us. Those are all the things that saps our strength okay. so one of the ways to preserve strength is to focus on god focus on his ways he seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be, added. That will be added unto you and as they are adding unto you what is happening to you your strength it's is renewed so mm. strength is renewed so focus is one of the key ways where we can you know um, focusing on God, focusing on his things. Like, you know, I was discussing with somebody this year. I think it was you say, oh, this year is me and God. It's the year of the Lord. <laughs> there is no way somebody have made up their mind that this year is just me and God. God is first. And the person will lose strength. Because the person, once you say it's me and God, God takes it over. God takes, God takes over everything about you. Because so when you get to that point, you're no more depending on your own strength because you say this, you and God, you now depend on the strength of him who never gets tired. So even when your physical strength starts waning, he supplies you yeah. his own strength that never fails. Yeah. All right. So it's very important. One of the things that kills the appetite of believers yeah. are the cares of this life. Um, you know, if you the parable of the sower, I said, you know, you know, say the thorns came and they took life out of it, you know, and and all those things, you know, they kill your appetite for for the things of God because um, you can't have appetite for the world and have appetite for God at the same time. Mm -hmm. They are mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. right? So 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 one has to go for the other. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that when you have appetite for God, everything that you need in this world will be supplied, will be given to you, so you are not missing anything. Mm -hmm. But the danger of having appetite for the things of this world is that you will miss God and even what you think you are getting, you will lose it at the end of the day. So in this year, 2024, my my my, my admonition to everyone is, look, it is me and God this year. If it is you and God, there's no way you are going to lose strength. There's no way you are going to get tired. If God is your priority, if God is your focus, there is no way you are going to lose strength. There's no way you are going to, you are going to be tired. So um, it's important that we we block all these things that you know kill our appetites mm. now let's look at matthew chapter 6 yeah we say in nl teaching station says seek the kingdom of god above all else and mm. live righteously and he will give you everything you need that's matthew 6 33 nlt okay so um if you look at Let's back up to Matthew 6, 24 before okay. that, so that um, just the, okay. we need to, 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 to zoom in on the focus, yes. Uh, it says, no one can serve two masters. Two masters, yes. For you will hate one and love the other. Yes. You will be devoted to one 
and despise the other. Yes. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Matthew All right. 7. All right. Very good. This is one of the greatest um, killers of appetite mm. for God and the things of God. When you are enslaved to money, mm. when all your decisions are centered around money, mm. you know, um, it's one of the things that just drain the life out of you. Mm. And that's why the Bible says in that Matthew 6, 33, says, seek you first the kingdom of God above all else. Let that be your focus. Mm. You can't look up and look down at the same time. Mm -mm. So if you want to serve God and mammon, trying to look up and down at the same time, there's no way you can move. Mm. You'll be stuck. You'll be overwhelmed. Mm. So if you want to ensure that your appetite for the things of God uh, for the, the word of God, for prayer, ensure that to, to ensure that you have appetite for those things, you have to ensure that God is your number one mm. and nothing else. Mm. I'll just tell us a story um, that George Muller um, shared in one of his books I read. Uh, he shared about this man who used to work for 16 hours. And he's, you know, it was, it was a man giving to so much prayers. Yeah. He said, when he looked at this man, he saw that, he said, this man, his spiritual strength was, was, was low, was weak. And he said, he called the man and said, you are walking too long. And the man confirmed it and said, yes, that even the 16 hours I'm walking, the money I'm making is still not enough to make ends mm -hmm. meet. Yes. And... George Muller even told him that, the man now told George Muller that when I when I finish working, by the time I want to read the Bible, I start dozing. And uh, when I try to pray, I just sleep off. Mm. And George Muller gave him a very interesting counsel. Mm. He told him that he should reduce the number of hours he's working. And the man said, ah, if I'm working for 16 hours, I'm not meeting up. I'm saying I should reduce the number of hours I'm working so that I can have time to study the word of God and have time to pray and that it will be better for me. What would happen if I reduce the number of work of work hours? It will be worst off. My financial situation will be worst off. You know. Well, as it as 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 God will have it, you know, um George Muller said when he was advising him, he saw the struggle of the man, you know, as in how, how, how can this be, mm. you know? But that is the ways of God. Mm. That's the ways of God. Mm. Um, God's ways are, is different from man's ways. It's not how much um, hours you put in that will determine whether you'll be sustained. Mm. If God blesses, even if it is four or eight hours that you put in, mm. it will cover whatever it is that, you know, you would require. Uh, these are just some of the adjustments that a lot of us who are believers ought to make to our lives so that we will actually be able to give attention to the things God wants us to give attention to. And it was from there, that book that George Muller made, uh, I got a quote. He says, it was when he told the story of that brother, he said, my brother, this is what he told him, he said, my brother, it is not your work that supports your family, but the Lord. Now, when we put these kind of things in perspective, it will not help us to be able to focus on the Lord. The Lord says, focus on me. It's not your work that will take care of your family. I'm not saying you shouldn't work. You will work. But yeah. have it at the back of your mind mm -hmm. that it is God that supports your family. I always tell people, I said, God is the source. Mm -hmm. There are other resources that there are different resources that God will use, but the ultimate source of everything we need for life, for ministry, for godliness is God. Mm. The source can be your job. The source can be your savings. Mm. The I mean, sorry, the resource can be your job. The mm. resource can be your savings. The resource can be a friend at different seasons of your life. The resource can just be a business. It could be a contract mm. that you just get. But the source of everything that will require to support us in everything that we need to do for God and in God comes from him. 
And if mm -hmm. it comes from, then he should be the focus and not the job. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that people now end, start working and then they lose focus of God and their focus is now on their job. Mm -hmm. And they limit the provisions of God to the jobs that they have, to their salaries, mm -hmm. you know. And these are some of the things that have now become distractions to so many people and mm -hmm. they can't focus on God as they, as they should focus on. And before you know it, they don't have appetite for the things of God anymore. All their energies and appetite is now for their jobs. Whatever yeah. you pay attention to, you develop appetite for. That is how it works. So the more you pay attention to God, the more you have appetite for God. And if you decide yeah. to, pay, to, to pay attention to your work, the appetite for your work will increase. And I tell you so many times, it can be mutually, you know, yeah. escalated exclusive and what i always tell people is that whatever i do i do it to the glory of god so even my work is god i do mm. it in god right mm. it is not it is not separate <laughs> so when mm. i and i'm working whatever i am doing i do it as unto the lord so when i'm working i am still working for god so mm. we need to use some of the mindsets that we just need to change and when we're able to change this mindset we will mm. now you, you will now discover that imagine that when somebody is working is working for God, is working in God, you know, you see that at the end of the day, um, his whole focus, his whole attention will still remain on God. And his yeah. appetite for the things of God can only increase because he has been able to see that everything he has, everything he does, it's all done in God and it's all in God. Yeah. So, um, that's one of the ways to ensure that um, we keep our appetites intact for the things that God has in provision for us. So um, we'll just look at what I will call um, a ways to, 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 to boost your appetite for the things of God. Remember, we're just still dealing with appetite because if you don't have appetite, you can't eat what God is giving you. So we're trying mm -hmm. like, how can I have it? I have appetite. So sometimes when people are sick, uh, they give them um, what they call supplements. They give them fruits, things just to, to increase that appetite. Because if that appetite is not there, the food will waste, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is to get to the point that uh, at least people know what to do uh, when they don't have appetite or people um, are able to see the need what is making them not to have appetite you know so whichever way it comes to you uh it's just important that you need to have this appetite for the things of god mm -hmm.